It's about a woman born without sight of whom very little was expected in life. But she defied the odds to become a vision of musical greatness. She rejects the term disability, preferring to acknowledge herself as having a different ability. And that different ability reflects in her profession as well. She's an opera singer, but unlike the stereotype we usually associate with an opera diva as being a physically massive woman, this mezzo-soprano is petite. Her life is proof that sometimes it's good when expectations come in small sizes. Correspondent Mike Kirsch traveled to Hawaii to tell us her triumphant tale. Mezzo-soprano Lori Rubin at home in Oahu, indulging her sweet tooth for contemporary pop. Should invite you flowers. The guilty pleasure of a rising opera star. Now my baby's dancing. Born blind with a voice that inspired her vision. Can you take Lori appeared the perfect little sister in the hands of her brother, Brian, who was more protective of Lori than she could possibly know. A happy little girl blissfully unaware of her future. Where are you going? A life that began with unimaginable uncertainty, says her mother, Lily. I remember it like it was yesterday. Lily Rubin gave birth to Lori 35 years ago in Los Angeles. A doctor informing her and Lori's dad that the retinas in Lori's eyes had never developed. And I said, are you telling us that Lori is blind? And he said, yes. And driving home, both of us like weeping terribly in the car, just devastated that our perfect child wasn't perfect. We went out and bought a van and we said, we're going to take her everywhere. Old home movies show Lori on white water rafting trips with her family. <laughs> then to their amazement, when she insisted on learning how to snow ski blind. A feat today she modestly sums up as the blind courage of youth. You know, it's so funny. I, I feel, and I think this is just part of being older, but you know, when you're a kid, you don't think about how things could kill you. <laughs> At the age of four, Lori met American pop icon Kenny Loggins of Footloose fame when her mother bumped into Loggins at a supermarket telling him Lori had a crush on him. He sort of became my official teacher of music 101. Loggins mentored Lori for eight years, having her sing backup vocals at 12 in 1991 for his song, If You Believe. If you believe in me, I will. One of the things that I was trying to reconcile with was, um, you know, I had all these wonderful people in my life, like my family and family friends, telling me how, what, how great I was. And then I had these kids in school showing me otherwise. I was the only blind kid at my school. I felt really isolated. Um, a lot of the other kids didn't know how to deal with me. Kids at the elementary school would put um, paper clips in her, in her potato chips, so she was afraid to eat because she didn't know what was in her food. Kids would pinch her. And later, when other girls Lori's age began to date, one of them, a close family friend, told Lori she'd never know romance. You'll live with your parents your whole life. You won't ever have a job. You won't have romance, because how can you expect to be in a relationship with somebody that's always going to have to take care of you? And, you know, so much about romance is being able to see the moonlight and you know, you, you look into each other's eyes and it's that beautiful moment and you're never gonna have that and all these things I'm never gonna have. And, I, you know, I was crushed. Lori tells me around the age of 12 came a seminal moment that would save her from a life of loneliness. When her mom took her to a performance of The Phantom of the Opera. I think when I knew that I wanted to sing this kind of music was when Christine gets up there and she sings Think of Me. Classical music was really where I found myself. Years of voice lessons and recitals would pay off. And the winner is Lori Rubin.
In 1996, Lori's singing talents earned her the prestigious Music Center Spotlight Award in Los Angeles at the age of 18. Then triumphantly proving she could sing blind on stage as Cinderella in the opera La Cenerentola at Oberlin College. A step closer to her dream of singing at New York's Metropolitan Opera House. But says she was then blindsided when not allowed to perform as a graduate opera student at Yale. I get to Yale and, and they say that I can't be in any of the operas two years in a row. And Told in so many words by her director that she'd distract other students or might possibly even fall off the stage. If I were to give a master class for directors, I'd say, just be open, you know, <laughs> just be open to different things. <laughs> Lori's producing a quirky new pop album about the obstacles she's overcome in life and on stage. I walked out feeling certain I had gotten the part, but then I got the call that nearly broke my heart. You need a nose job, they said. You should get a nose job. Her song, Nose Job, has been a hit with local high school students confronted by their own personal dramas. The song's message, Lori says, love who you are. I won't get a nose job, I say. I won't get a nose job. Please don't get a nose job. Lori also recently published a memoir about her life called Do You Dream in Color? Insights from a Girl Without Sight. Insights from a girl who would find romance in the end. Her longtime partner, musician and composer Jenny Tyra of Oahu. The two met as graduate students during Lori's difficult years at Yale. Ever since, composing and writing music together and everything else. The two giving back to today's performing arts students every summer on Oahu through their acclaimed music festival and arts program called Ohana Arts. Everything happens for a reason. My path was carved for me, and you know, I have to just embrace it. I never thought that I'd be living in Hawaii doing what I'm doing, and I never thought that I'd be writing a pop album, you know. The title track of her new album, The Girl I Am, an ode to making it in life against all odds. If anyone should knock you down, just have to recognize that she's just like anyone else and even sighted people fall off stages and she's never fallen off a stage the girl her mom and dad always dreamed of my skin is made of steel and you can't make me bleed because I love the girl Correspondent Mike Kirsch in Hawaii, thank you for that report. A quick footnote. In Latin America, the disabled are often an overlooked sector of society. According to the World Bank, there are at least 50 million disabled people on the continent, about 10% of the population. Governments provide little revenue for assistance programs for the disabled, and families often admit and abandon their disabled loved ones at institutions, which are operated by foundations that are often overwhelmed. About 80 to 90 percent of people with disabilities are unemployed, and most lack health services or even physical access to buildings. Something to keep in mind while we consider the rapid growth of the economies of these countries. In January 2010, Haiti experienced one of the most destructive earthquakes in the island's history. It registered a 7.0 magnitude quake about 15 miles from its capital of Port-au-Prince. A hard-hit island is still recovering. In December of 2011, an organization was formed called Haiti Tourism. Its goal is to recover economically from the catastrophic quake by presenting Haiti to the outside world in a way you've never seen before, as an island paradise. It's an effort to draw tourists. Will the strategy work? 
take a look and decide. depend on other countries, we need to figure out ourselves how to move forward and how to get these revenues. And tourism must be a number one on the list. Everything is an adventure here. 